We have our fireside chat. Um, it's on our platform. What that is is what we'll just want to set up simple type of things. It'll be kind of like in the fireside lounge. There, there may be appetizers. Amy and I are there for you know. It maybe be every other week throughout a month or every other week. And that's just simply for students to come up and just kind of talk to us on a more individual basis. So as opposed to, so we're kind of more in the face of the students as opposed to getting them to the student congress meetings where there could be questions by like 35 people and it kind of make them feel uncomfortable. It's just a more individual basis where we're able to talk about the issues and then get their name, contact information, set up a meeting and start moving on what they have. Right, so. Also, um, something that we would love to do is partner up with the Open Post. If you guys would let us have, um, you know, columns in it, letting people know just what's going on with the Student Congress, what are the issues that people are worried about at the time, what events do we have coming up. Uh, it would be so fantastic to, for them to be seeing our face, and then that way they would know that I can go talk to that person. They've been writing in the Open Post, you know, every other week and whatnot. Um, so I just think that that would be a huge thing as well to get our faces and things more out there. And then one more thing is we just want our platform to be known to everyone. We want everyone to know our platform so that it can keep us accountable. So students can be like, hey, um, how's the, you know, whatever, uh, the student quad initiative going? And I'm able to update them right there, like, oh, I had a meeting with this person. Mm -hmm. So it just gives them um, motivation and incentive to be um, more involved on campus. Sorry to add one more thing. I know we're talking a lot about this, but I think it would also be great to constantly be getting student feedback, getting approval ratings. How do you think that we're doing? Because we want to be impressing the students. We want to be making them happy. We want to be making their lives better at OU. So to be constantly making sure, having them evaluate us, what can we be, do like, be doing better? What can be making your experience here better? That's all that we're about, is improving the lives of the students that are going here. Um, well, Kim and I have talked about it a lot. Um, and we, uh, if we get elected, we definitely want to um, do something in conjunction with you guys, um, almost like a, a presidential letter um, out, you know, every like month or so, uh, letting the students know what we're up to if, you know, they want to get involved. Also, similarly to what they want, um, we want to set up tables um, in the OC uh, called something like uh, talking to the tap when, you know, the, you know, the e-board sits out and we, you know, uh, are in the lunch uh, lunch room or the cafeteria and just talking talking to students, seeing what they want done. Um, real real ideas that you know they could come to us. We want to tackle the big ideas. Maybe they can bring some small ideas that we could uh, push for them. Right. We can implement these programs that are supposed to get a feel for student concern, but are they realistic? Do they work? Um, traditionally, no. As we can see, unfortunately, we have our student congress meetings every Monday and the student body doesn't show up. We are supposed to be representing the student body, yet we're a group of maybe about 30, 40, and uh, the student body is to 20,000. So it, I, I still believe the best way to get a feel for student concerns is to connect to the student body is with a handshake and a conversation. You have to talk to everyone. When you're staying in line um, at Cafe O'Bears, you gotta talk to the person out of you, say, oh hey, you know, it's nice outside today. And then get a conversation going. What are you involved in on campus? What's your name? So when you see them in the OC, you can say hello to them. You, you can say, oh, what should we be working on? So I still believe talking to the student body and actually being social is the best way to get a feel for student concern. Uh, we were talking about similarities and differences in our tickets. And I think what sets us apart is that um, our past leadership experience does speak to our future leadership, hopefully. Um, because Laura and I, even though we have had leadership roles, we, um, not a single one of our organizations overlap. So in that sense, we're able to bring greater representation to the student body. Also, both of us have been founding members of organizations on campus. So we have shown that we not only hold leadership positions, but we are able to take initiatives to bring people together for a common cause. As far as um, increasing involvement through, uh, for the commuters and students that are not involved, I think another aspect that we bring is that um, Laura is a commuter. She's not involved in Student Congress, yet she is, we're coming together to be able to bring that representation. One of the things we want to do is um, expand our suggestion box program all around campus. We have, I think, about eight boxes that are supposed to be going up sometime this semester. We do want to still expand that because a lot of times we expect students to come to us with issues. We want to make sure we can provide some sort of outlet to the students so that they can give us their feedback. And another thing that we want to do is um, kind of uh, Reevaluate responsibilities of student congress members. Reevaluate uh, what they do with their positions. While you can expect the student body president and vice president, and I am the current vice president, so I know this very well, to go to every single event on campus, and Kristen and I do, you have to have those almost 35 members out there promoting congress, going to events, talking to people. You cannot expect two people to represent 
19, almost 19,000 students if there are not more people bringing other interests to the table. Expansion of campus life. Like, I don't like walking around here on the weekends and it seems being like bare. I feel like I'm walking through like a park or something. Um, so that's definitely one thing. So our first main initiative is actually I was talking upstairs when we were uh, tabling to the uh, president, current president of SAC, the uh, athletic. So that's huge. Um, athletics are going to be huge. We definitely want to give more money to athletics, help promote them, meet with them on their uh, weekly basis and understand their issues and understand how we can get more people to their games. Because our soccer team, when, they, when they're top in the country, top 50, and they're playing Ohio State, and only 25 people show up to a tiny bleacher, that is really, really ridiculous. And so we definitely want to get more people, because that's what athletics need in order to have more funding, is more support. So we definitely want to give that, and we want to help students understand how Student Congress can help them get things that they want. I just, going off of it, I just think it's not that hard. I think that it's time and money just needs to be put into marketing things that are going on around campus, and people will get excited about it. They told us, yeah, when we ran around Hamlin and told all the freshmen about the game, they all came out for it. Nobody normally does that, though. It just takes time, and it takes, you know, a lot of effort, but it's totally worth it in the end when you can see a community coming together. And I would say, if Brandon and I can, I just can improve community on campus, a little bit while while we're in office, that would be a great accomplishment. Um, well, nobody's going to show up for those games unless they're at night. No one's going to go during the day. But on top of that, um, we'd like to implement sales tax exempt bookstores. And I feel this will probably affect most students um, on campus, obviously, because you know, most students visit the bookstore more than anything else. And um, I know that you know saving us all money is the best thing we can possibly do. Is to develop more well-rounded students because, again, these people are graduating. They are going to work to create a better future for this state, hopefully staying in this state. Um, as far as the sales tax exemption issue goes, I do want to address that because as current student body VP, I have talked to um, the manager of the bookstore and Richard Fackel, who's the director of the Oakland Center, and the vice president of student affairs. Basically, that has to be done at a state level. The state legislature has to pass legislation that exempts textbook stores at university campuses to not, to not charge tax. The only other option that you have is for the university to cover tax for every textbook sold on campus. Well, guess where that money comes from? It comes from the general fund, which is heavily subsidized by your tuition money. Do you really want to pay the sales tax for every other student on campus?